Hey all, welcome to Shadrack. This is Raj here. Uh, guys, it was a great uh, Saturday. Um, our um, interview with uh, Jeff Galvin is already canned. Jeff has had a look at it. He likes it. Um, we are waiting for um, his office to give us the all clear and I'll have that video up for you. Uh, most probably on Tuesday uh, at the latest. Uh, so I'm very hopeful uh, of releasing it by Tuesday. Uh, and um, uh, coming back to what we are doing right now, so I was scanning our portfolio of companies and uh, I wanted to do something other than CRISPR and uh, Ginkgo Bioworks because we have had a lot of news about those two companies and we have covered them a lot. Uh, and also Illumina has been on the news of late. So I zeroed in on uh, Bluebird Bio and uh, had a look at what's happening with Bluebird uh, because I also saw a cup and handle pattern out there on the charts. I think I have shown it to you before for Bluebird. So I thought let's look at what is actually happening in the company and where they are because low sell is coming for approval. So that's the focus of today's video. And friends, we are very close to 4,000. So if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe uh, and help us reach the target of 4,000. And if you have friends who are interested in genomics and uh, genomic investment, I would request that please uh, forward a link uh, to our uh, channel. Maybe they would like to subscribe and they like the programs out here. So uh, why not give it a try? So with that said, uh, let's get started for today. Welcome back, friends. On 24th of April 2023, Bluebird Bio announced that it submitted its biologics license uh, application, or uh, BLA in short, to the US FDA for uh, Luvocell, uh, which is uh, aimed at treating patients with sickle cell disease who are 12 years and older and have a history of uh, vasco-occlusive uh, events. Uh, and uh, the company has requested a priority review, which if granted would shorten the FDA's review of the application to six months from the time of filing. Uh, so the time of filing was uh, somewhere uh, around uh, 24th of April. So take six months from there. So we have April to May, May to June, June to July, July to August, August to September, September to October. So that takes us to the last quarter of the year. So around that time, we can expect a prior, uh, expect a approval of the BLA if, um, if a priority review is granted. Uh, it should be noted that Bluebird earlier had sold two priority uh, review vouchers to raise uh, money and extend its cash runway. Uh, and since the last update, Bluebird has made progress with the launch of Zinteglo for beta thalassemia. Uh, six patients have started treatment with Zinteglo uh, by collecting their cells. The first commercial infusion of Zinteglo has been successfully completed and the company expects to generate revenue from it in the second quarter of 2023. Payers have been receptive as there has been not a single denial for Zinteglo so far and the approval process typically takes around two weeks so it's not too much and during the first year of the launch the number of patients uh, starting treatment uh, is the primary measure of commercial success and uh, however Bluebird does, uh, Bluebird does not plan to provide revenue projections for Zinteglo in 2023 and it's understandable to an extent because they're also trying to gauge the market size they have an idea but they want to be uh, sure and what is more uh, reassuring than actually seeing the market data emerge so hopefully from 2024 onwards they would be in a position to start projecting uh, with a bit of confidence in march 2023 bluebird successfully completed the first commercial infusion of sky sona uh, they have collected cells for a total of around uh, three patients for uh, this treatment uh, since uh, they received approval and um, I think Bluebird has activated three qualified uh, training centers or uh, QTCs as they call them uh, that can administer sky sonar to patients with cerebral um, uh, adrenonuclear dystrophy or CALD as they call it. I'm going to call it, call it CALD, easier on the tongue. Uh, furthermore, they expect to add two more QTCs on the West Coast during 2023. I try to look for more information on these QTCs, but this is the level of information that I have. And Bluebird Bio expects the Biologics License Application or BLA for lower cell intended for the treatment of SCD will be accepted in the second quarter of 2023. So they, there was a bit of a delay in submitting and then uh, it's already um, 17th of June. 
So anytime now in this month, we should get a word from FDA whether they have accepted the uh, BLA. And um, if approved, the company plans to launch the commercial availability of lower cell in early 2024. They estimate that around 20,000 individuals, which is approximately one-fifth of the sickle cell disease populations in, in the United States, may qualify as eligible candidates for this gene therapy. The company says that it's on track to scale to 40 to 50 QTCs by the end of 2023 and that their QTC network is designed to maximize their commercial opportunity in uh, beta thalassemia and to uh, prioritize proximity to individuals uh, uh, living with SCD in anticipation of a 2024 commercial launch for low cell if approved by FDA. And on the Skysona front, they anticipate 5 to 10 patient starts this year. And uh, I'm expecting that it will improve in the following year going forward. In the three months ending March 31, 2023, the total net revenue amounted to $2.4 million. This represents an increase compared to the same period in 2022, which had a total net revenue of $1.9 million. And this difference, this uh, extra uh, $0.5 million increase in the revenue was mainly attributed to the sales generated by Skysona products. Based on the current operating plans, Bluebird expects to um, Bluebird experts that its cash, cash equivalents, restricted cash, marketing securities, etc., will be sufficient to meet uh, their planned expenses and capital expenditure requirements into the fourth quarter of 2024. So they have money until end of next year. This means if lower cell gets approved by end of this year, uh, or even in the first quarter of next year, that can give them the needed boost. Increasing Skysona sales will also help. Already the first seven patients have started the Zinteglo treatment this year with more to come. And uh, last month, yeah, you should remember Bluebird uh, Bio filed for mixed shelf offering of 350 million. Uh, I think I made a video on this. Uh, so if you hadn't seen that, you can have a look at it again. Um, and uh, that helps them to raise funds if needed uh, at short notice. Therefore, there can be uh, potential equity dilution risk. But in my personal opinion, I think it's just a precaution that they have uh, made in case there are delays at the FDA. Uh, but I think that it's just a precaution so that f funds can be raised at very short notice. Uh, I'm not expecting equity delays, at least at this stage. Let us see how things go. As, uh, as we progress through the next month or so, uh, if their BLA gets accepted by the end of this month or maybe uh, early next month, then I think we are still on track. Uh, so that said, earlier this month, Barclays upgraded Bluebird Bio to overweight from equal weight and adjusted price target to $8 from $7. So that's a $1 increase out there. There are around 11 analysts who are offering 12-month price target for forecast for Bluebird Bio. And uh, they have a median target of $7 with a high estimate of $10 and a low estimate of $3. The median estimate represents a 85% increase from the last price that we have of uh, Bluebird on an approximate, is, uh, approximate basis. So there seems to be a lot of uh, opportunity out here. Analyst consensus is to hold the stock. Now I want to take you to the uh, TradingView platform to look at the price chart. Here we are in the trading view platform uh, looking at the uh, price chart for um, uh, for Bluebird Bio. And uh, each of the candles here is a one day candle. And as you can see, I have drawn a, a cup and handle pattern. The cup is not perfect, uh, but still I, I would consider that a cup and handle. The handle was formed perfectly. But I'm hoping that we are able to overcome that and we are able to go uh, further upward. Uh, because as we march closer to the end of the year, lower cell approval comes into horizon. And also with every passing quarter, we are going to get uh, additional numbers of uh, Zinteglo and Skysona patient enrollments, additional QTC openings. So I think Bluebird is marching from strength to strength. And um, yeah, that's my opinion. And if I look at the momentum here, it dropped suddenly uh, and the MACD is still bullish but tending towards the signal line. I do not see any negative uh, news out here uh, but um, uh, it all depends on the market sentiment as well because uh, inherently genomics is a very uh, risky area uh, especially when you have uh, companies working on new technologies and uh, they are taking their therapy uh, through FDA and we should remember that FDA has been approving small molecules, large molecules, but as far as uh, genomic uh, gene therapy is concerned or uh, genomics is concerned, CRISPR related therapy is concerned, uh, FDA is also having a very, very steep learning curve while going for approval and um, uh, therefore the risk factor is always there that something could happen in the 
uh, FDA approval cycle. Uh, though currently the data looks really good for uh, Bluebird Bio, and Bluebird Bio is not a brand new company. It has been around for quite a while. So it's got a lot of experience. And uh, I'm feeling um, uh, optimistic that Bluebird is going to march from strength to strength. And potentially, they may not have to uh, use the mixed shelf offering. But I want to take you to their uh, pipeline because I am expecting that once they get the approval for uh, lower cell, uh, they should start expanding their pipeline because they are uh, they got a very limited pipeline. Let us go there. This is the pipeline for uh, Bluebird Bio, and as you can see, uh, Low Cell it's already on phase three, uh, and uh, SCD HGB two zero six it's in phase two, and then we have this uh, small arrow out here which says preclinical pre undisclosed multiple undisclosed we want to see the explosion of that into uh, many different lines and uh, giving the targets of each of these uh, uh, therapies that are in the preclinical stage what is it they are doing and uh, that will give us an idea of uh, further growth potential for the company because uh, face it uh, scd they have got competition from uh, CRISPR therapeutics and potentially in future uh, they will get competition from beam and um, uh, only CALD is a place where they are uh, on their own without much competition. Uh, so uh, they need to have more therapies coming in for the stock to become a growth stock, I, in my opinion, and see if they can promote any of them which become viable uh, so that they can go into clinical trials, uh, submit an int for it and get into the clinical trial. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I'm looking forward to in, uh, uh, in Bluebird. And this is exactly where the strength of CRISPR therapeutics comes through. Whenever I look at Bluebird's pipeline, I can't but help uh, remembering CRISPR therapeutics pipeline. It's huge. It's huge and uh, there is a whole lot of milestones that are coming up going forward. So we have CTX110, we have CTX130 and uh, they have described a whole lot of therapies and also uh, in their pipeline you can see the wide range of collaboration and cost sharing that is happening which not only includes sharing the risk but also sharing expertise uh, both in marketing commercialization as well as uh, development so uh, all those things make uh, CRISPR the top stock but again Bluebird Bio uh, it may not be as strong as CRISPR but I think uh, in terms of making some money, there is a potential to almost double the money when it comes to uh, Bluebird Bio. Again, this is not financial advice. This is my personal opinion. And I'm going to try and put some money into Bluebird Bio. Um, and the time horizon I'm looking for is, you know, two-year time period. And in two years' time period, I think it should uh, give me really good uh, returns. Uh, that's what I'm expecting. And of course, I'm fully aware that there's a risk factor that it may not happen and that there could be equity dilution down the road and the stock prices may fall again. So those things cannot be ruled out. And you can also have uh, somebody like Scorpion Capital or somebody else coming up with a, a short sale or anything. We can't rule those risks out either. So with that said, uh, still it's looking like a, a good risk reward uh, situation at this point of time. And while we are at 81, CRISPR therapeutic stock looks pretty uh, good at this point of time to make an entry if uh, one had missed the earlier opportunities. Because again, CRISPR therapeutics is also marching towards uh, the year end when uh, it can expect to get uh, approval for uh, Exacel. So that's what I have for you, my friends, and I hope you enjoy this weekend. And uh, I wish you a great time in the market when it opens uh, next week. Uh, with that, I would like to bid bye, and uh, I'll catch up with you in the next video. Bye for now.